clear out the head trash, get very focused, get very clear on my mindset, and then develop a little bit of a callus or that resiliency that you can build over time so that when the roadblock presents itself, you're very clear, you know, positive attitude, positive mindset, and truly have the belief that anything is possible. Sometimes the roadblock is because we don't have the right skills. We need to develop a skill that allows us to work through that roadblock. Because, you know, overcoming roadblocks, as I said, it's a choice, but the way that you actually put that choice into play can be, can be very different. The difference between a stumbling block and a stepping stone is how high you raise your foot. Um, I'm Rob Brown and I'm here with my partner, Phil Calandra, and uh, welcome to the latest episode of the Truest Fan Blueprint. Uh, we're glad to have you on board. So in thinking about this quote, Phil, what really jumps out in my mind is one of the steps in our blueprint process, which is how do you deal with roadblocks? How do you deal with stumbling blocks? Do you, you know, allow yourself just to run straight into them and like a head on collision, you know, or do you let yourself get tripped up a little bit or are you willing to kind of raise your foot and step through? I think it's a really important thing to think about as you're trying to be a better version of you, as you're trying to lead um, your business, as you're trying to, to be a better person in your community or in your family, you've, you're going to run into roadblocks and you have to be willing to say, uh, answer the question, how am I going to handle this? Give me give me your quick thoughts as we uh, dive in. Yeah, good to be with you again, Rob. I love that quote. Uh, all I can think of is, you know, trying to, to run maybe like trail running and you don't lift your foot up quite high enough and every rock or every root ends up tripping you. So that's a great, great quote. And, you know, the reality is we're all going to have roadblocks in life. That's why it's called life. You're going to have the roadblocks and then you individually are going to have to have the systems, the techniques, the tricks, the, the hacks to bulldoze those roadblocks, uh, remove them, and then also have the maturity and remove the ego and realize that some roadblocks you're not going to be able to remove. Yeah. Uh, and you, know, you have to be um, able to deal with that, too. I think for a, a, lot, a long part of my life, I have been... I've lived kind of the bull in the china shop mentality. I just didn't care what the roadblock or the obstacle was. I was just going to go charging into the china shop and I didn't care what I knocked over. But I think as I've matured and lived longer and have maybe a little bit more wisdom, um, I've learned that, you know, when you see that roadblock, you don't always have to charge at it or charge through it. Sometimes you can kind of step back and think about it. Right. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And you mentioned a great point, and that's that, you know, as we go through this journey of life, we build this uh, experiential learning, right? That's the old saying also is, um, you know, experience is the best <laughs> teacher. It's just so yeah. damn expensive. And isn't that the truth? Because sometimes it takes us more than once to learn the lesson. So I think in, in thinking about roadblocks and today's you know, kind of message is everybody's going to have a different way to process them or, or get over them or, or bulldoze through them. And I know for me in my journey as a father and, and in relationships in my business, I always kind of relied on the positive mindset, you know, clear out the head trash, get very focused, get very clear on my mindset and then develop a little bit of a callus or that resiliency that you can build over time so that when the roadblock presents itself, you're very clear, you know, positive attitude, positive mindset, and truly have the belief that anything is possible. You can overcome it. You get knocked down four times, you get up five. That type of mindset has to be developed. And I think the younger you develop that in a, as a business leader, as a parent, in your relationships, 
the quicker you figure that one out. Yeah, and and, 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 and sometimes though you can't remove the roadblock. It's an external roadblock that you have no control over. You know, we work right. with a lot of financial advisors, and sometimes when the markets go crazy and they go into bear market territory, that has a big impact on their business. It's a roadblock that they can't control. They can find a way to adapt to it or to work through it. Um, and I think your example of having a positive mindset is the most important thing. Don't let the drop in the market be the drop in your positivity, your mindset, your resilience, your decision to, to bounce back and deal with that thing that you've been given that you can't, that you can't really control. Yeah, it reminds me of a great uh, sketch drawing by the New York Times cartoonist, Carl Richards. And it's basically two circles that intersect. One is things you can control. The other is things that matter. And the intersection of those two, if you can visualize it listening to us, those are the things you focus on. So things that matter and things you can control, you focus on. Outside of those two circles, you're just beating your head up against the wall, right? Because to your point, you, you can't control it. And in our world, in the financial capital markets, we can't control the markets. What can we control? We can control a client's behavior and we can control the financial plan that we've built for them to get them from point A to point B and their desired financial yeah. outcome. So, you know, the other uh, thing that, that um, I'm reminded of, um, you know, in our process with the blueprint, one of the things that we help our clients walk away with is what we call the truest fan action plan. And the truest fan action plan is what you're committing to do and what are your top priorities for the next uh, 90 days, the next uh, like a sprint period of time that you're really dead set focused on. And, you know, sometimes when we work with folks and put those action plans together, you, you begin to think, well, you know, I'm impenetrable now because I've got this plan. I know exactly what I'm going to do. But just because you have a plan and know exactly what you're going to do doesn't mean you won't run into roadblocks. But because you have the plan, when that roadblock does occur, you can go back to what you said you were going to do. And so that's a way, not just with a positive mindset, but also analytically be able to say, okay, how do I adjust to this? Or do I need to adjust to this? Or is this roadblock something that I need to deal with, but I don't need to deal with it right now and the things that are most important to me? I can put it in my notes, put it in my journal so that when I'm doing my future planning for my next 90 day sprint, I am going to deal with that robot because I'll have more time and more energy to be able to do it. So it's, it's really, again, it's, it's a choice. It's, you know, what, what we do with a roadblock isn't just something that we should act reflexively to or ignore. We have to say, if it's a real robot, if it's something that really can get in the way, let's, what, what, what are we going to do about it? even if we can't change it. Yeah, and that's right. You, you've got to make the conscious choice of the right direction that's going to be for you. The other thing that comes to mind and, and always work really well for me, and I know it does for others, is if you're going to cultivate and build this positive mindset, then you've got to be tied to and focusing on things that do just that. For me, it was reading. I have found great resource and make a commitment, a, a conscious commitment to, to attempt to read 10 to 15 pages every day. It could be something as time-tested as Norman Vincent Peale, who I know you thoroughly have studied. It could be Dale Carnegie. It could be some of the new thinking, Tony Robbins, Ed Milet. But doing that builds this positive mindset. It builds the reservoir or the arrows in the quiver for you, for me, to actually pull back on those, uh, that comes from, in my case, it, it comes from reading and studying success literature. Maybe it's business related as financial advisors. Maybe it's the truest fan of the, the book that you gave me. Gosh, what has that been four years ago now? The, the original copy of truest fan. And I go back to that regularly uh, among others, because it's something you can pull off and that's a choice but it gives you that, that ammunition, that, that arrow in the quiver, so to speak, to, for you to be able to, to deal with the roadblocks. And, and I, one other thing in, in thinking about in my business and the way that I work with my clients, 
I call those roadblocks obstacles and threats. Obstacles are things that we can consciously tackle and remove. Threats are usually external. It's the market, it's the economy, it's politics, it's a pandemic, it's a terror attack that affects the capital markets. But it may be another way to think of roadblocks. I, I think of them in my what we call signature solution. Those financial advisors that are listening to us right now know we how we think and how we communicate our signature value. Um, if you're not in that financial advisor camp, it may be a new term, but signature solution is something that we, we cling to as a differentiator in our businesses. And so I would call those obstacles and threats and just right. throw that in there. <laughs> so, well, that's, I think that's a great point. Actually, you made two, two great points. One, when you talked about the obstacles and threats as being part of your signature solution in your practice as an advisor, you're, you're calling out in those steps that you walk your clients through to get from where they are when they meet you to where they are after they've met you and they're working with, you're calling out that there are going to be obstacles and threats, not just um, right. the ones they may face because they're working with you and they're looking for, you know, a short term solution to get them on track, but also on over the long term as they continue to work with you. So I think that's a great point to make. But the second thing that you said that I think is really important when you talked about that reading that you do, uh, because one of the a good ways to deal with a roadblock is through learning because sometimes the roadblock is because we don't have the right skills. We need to develop a skill um, right. that allows us to work through that roadblock. So when you take those, you know, that time to do the reading, you can focus it towards topics that help you develop whatever that skill is to, to gain the learn, to be able to overcome the roadblocks. Cause it, cause you know, overcoming roadblocks, as I said, it's a choice, but the way that you actually put that choice into play can be, can be very different. You know, as, as I was talking about that, I was actually thinking of a recent conversation that I have had with a client um, who's two years into a five year succession plan. He's going to be buying the business of another advisor or actually finish it off in five years. He's already started the acquisition two years ago with, with the initial signing of the deal. But two years into it, the practice that he's acquiring is totally refusing to follow through on the things that they committed to do in the process of the succession plan. Mm. And it's a really tough place for, for my client, Jeff, to be. He just, he just doesn't know what to do. And it, it seems like out of every three or four conversations that we have, two or three of them are him just, you know, expressing his frustration with this process. And he's, he's got a roadblock, a real roadblock in this situation, but he's not necessarily choosing how to deal with it. He's just going back over and over again, trying to use different words to say the same thing, to encourage sure. his partners to do what they say they were going to do and they don't want to do it. And he's not, he's, and he's not willing to say, you know, maybe this isn't work. Maybe I should just pull out of this, which I personally think would kick him in the butt and, and they'd realize that they're part of the problem. But anyway, it's, it's a roadblock like that. And, but, but he doesn't see it as a roadblock because he just keeps kind of going back and back over and over again, trying to do, you know, a different version of the same thing. And he's not able right. to solve the problem. Um, and I, right. and I think that's, I think we, we all run into situations like that, whether it's in our businesses or in our lives outside of our work. Well, and that goes to the, the famous saying, uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Uh, it's like banging your head against the wall. So maybe Jeff has got to heed some of that traditional advice. Yeah, but and I maybe maybe that is what you just said is is a, is a perfect example of a roadblock <laughs> that most of us run into on a semi regular basis. Yeah, because, yeah. Um, you know, I uh, can think it's, a, it's natural part a, of life. A simple analogy. I've done a fair amount of trail running. Uh, and trail racing, some some endurance runs. And if you're running along a trail, 
uh, it's not like running on a road. When you run on trails, you have rocks, you have roots, you have puddles, you have limbs, you have branches. And you and and when you're running, uh, and I'm not an extremely fast runner, but I think, a, you know, an eight minute mile, eight and a half minute mile on trails. Sometimes you've got to go around a big log. Sometimes you got to make the decision to jump. Sometimes you got to make the decision to go right through the puddle. And it, some of those, especially if you're in a race, you're going to want to make those in a split instant second. And you will be forced in your life to be called upon any number of times to make a decision about the roadblock or the, the puddle or the, the, the route. Some of them you have to make quickly. And guess what? Sometimes you're going to make the wrong call. You're going to go through the puddle and then your foot's wet for another five miles. And you think, ah, that really was deeper than I thought. That's life. Pick yourself up and just keep going. And, and that's, again, where the development of this positive mindset, that's the mantra, you know, the truest fan blueprint, the action plan. Get the tools you need so that when that happens, you just can shrug it off and say, ah, I continue to march. Life is good, even though you might have had to uh, go around the roadblock instead of it simply removing itself. Because guess what? In life, it it just doesn't magically all appear and happen the way we design it, right? It, it never happens that way. And that's okay. That's what makes it spicy. That's what makes it, it fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's absolutely right. And I think as we wind to a close here, one of the most important things we try to do in each episode is give a recommendation on how to use what we've been talking about in your life and in your business. And the way that we call it out in our process and our blueprint is that the first thing you do is you've got to write down your roadblocks. Don't be afraid to put them on a piece of paper or your computer or however you like to write things down so you can name them. You kind of, it's like calling out your enemy. You know, it's like this roadblock, <laughs> I want to, I want to see that. And then don't try to solve them all at one time, because most likely whatever your roadblocks are, you couldn't solve them all at one time if you wanted to. So don't try to solve them all at one time. Pick one and say, you know, this is how I'm going to deal with this roadblock because I know it's getting in the way of whatever that important action item is that you have in your action plan, or if you're using a Truist fan action plan or some other planning system so that you can call it out and then you can name how you're going to uh, work through it and just tick them off one at a time and keep that list rolling. So you're not, you're not building imaginary ro roadblocks or you're, you know, you're running into the same roadblock over and over again because you didn't call it out. Write it down and then, and then, and then decide how you're going to deal with it uh, one at a time. And I think that's a great way to, to move forward and, and get better performance um, in your life and in your business if that's what you want to do as a result of listening to this podcast or just a result of wanting to be, you know, a better version of you. Yeah, I agree 100 percent. I mean, this is a topic that could con continue to be discussed and perhaps for another time we can do that. Yeah, well, I'm sure it'll come it'll come back up because there are lots of, of roadblocks and we've got to call them out. So we'll help you do that uh, through this podcast. So so let's uh, let's wind it down here. Thank you all for tuning in to the Truest Fan Blueprint. Uh, we've been happy to have you aboard. I'd love to ask you a quick favor. Whatever device or app you're using to listen to this podcast, it has a rating system on there. Go ahead and give us a rating. I would encourage it to be five stars, but um, ultimately it's up to you. But we want to build our audience. And one of the best ways to do it is to get some ratings, to get some comments. So please take some time to do that at the end of this podcast. And as we always like to remind you, we're rooting for your success. Take care. <music>